So hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Matthew Jones and in today's video I'll be sharing with you my personal interview experience. Being a 2021 uh being a DV2020 winner, I had my interview and in this video that's what I'll be sharing and my case was a single case. Case number Africa region around 24,000. DV2020 case number around Africa region 24,000. So my interview was scheduled around April or uh, the interview was scheduled on 9th of March 2020 that those are the last few visas that were issued before the proclamation. I was very lucky for that uh, for that matter. So before we, when we start about the interview itself, I would like maybe to share something that had happened on my case. I did my application by myself. I did everything by myself on a phone actually but after the results were out i realized that there was a mistake on my name my middle name was missing that shows that i had um, omitted it when i did my application so actually the first day when i received the results i never knew that there was a mistake i thought that the results maybe should be that way without the middle name i don't know but later on that's when i realized oh my middle name is missing and it should not be that way so I had nothing to do. What I did is that on the DS260, I had to fill all my three names. Even if the results came without the middle name, middle name was omitted on the initial application. So on the DS260, I did it. I filled everything with my three names. I submitted my support documents having the three names. So I had no other mistake. I had that one mistake. And it's a major mistake, actually, because missing a name, that's a big deal. But anyway, everything went well so in this video today i have a lot of time that's why i'm making several videos because so, i know in the maybe in the in the course of the week i won't have time and that's why i'm making this video again today so i think that's all for the my case but next we are going to share the interview itself the experience and what went down there the interview was held in kenya uh u.s embassy in nairobi that is in kenya that is in africa so Let's jump to our video right away. So welcome back. And in this video, I'll be more into details because this is my personal case. And maybe something I should add is that I had two passports. I'm from Kenya. And for those people who know those countries around East Africa, they are changing their passport from the analog passport to the e-passport. And at the embassy, you will need that e-passport of which I didn't have and uh, you know i did my application while i was in asia Ca actually i won my green card when i was out of my country but i scheduled my interview to be held at home country because you know i needed to change the passports i also needed some documents from my home country so before the interview i had to travel back home and i went i did my application for the new e-passport and there's no problem with that if you have an old passport it gets expired through along the way it's okay just have the new passports at the interview carry both of them my case i attended with both passports but they even never asked for the old passport you know the passport that i used to you know to make the all the applications and all documents with they never even asked about it i had it with me at the interview but they never asked for it they just took the new passport that i had empty passport and that's when they uh, they stamped the visa on so it's good to carry both of them in case they ask for it so without much ado i'll be taking you through my interview experience and uh, it started as follows successful dv 2020 interview single case location u.s embassy in kenya time 7 a.m here is the interview experience i arrive at embassy at around 6 a.m few people on the queue i joined them I had to wait until 6.30. So at 6.30, there is the first security check. They checked for the second newsletter, passport and other gadgets such as laptop are to be left outside. So of course you don't have to carry such gadgets when you're attending an uh, interview for, uh, at any embassy. So avoid carrying bags and other stuff. Just carry the documents and maybe the phone. 
So second, security checks. Check for the, my documents again. And at this point, you have to leave your phone and get a badge for the recorrection. You know, you have to leave your phone there. Then you'll come pick it up after the interview. Straight to the reception. I got my ticket number. Asked to wait outside to be called. At this point, I realized I messed up. My interview fee was still in my phone. By this I mean that, you know, the money that I was to use to pay the interview fee was still on my phone. The mobile money service. You know, when I was reading some instruction, the, there was that option that you can use your mobile money to pay the interview fee. So I was still carrying my, phone, uh, my cash on my mobile, of which I left my phone at the reception or at the security check. So my interview fee was still in my, my phone, that is the M-Pesa, for those in, uh, in Kenya they know that. They had an option of paying through the M-Pesa, okay, that's a sign. Of which my phone was left on second security check. I just left, went and picked my phone, walked outside and withdrew the cash, came back. On the first security check, they allowed me in because I had the ticket number on, on, the second, uh, on the second security check, they refused. And I had to wait and queue like the rest of the people. So for there, there were over 30 people queuing on the securi uh, second security check. So I had to wait and bear in mind, my ticket number is almost to be called inside there. Time is ticking. At this point, I knew my ticket number was already called, but I had no otherwise. After like 30 minutes, I passed that security check and straight to the reception. I explained what had happened because already my ticket was called. Luckily enough, they reactivated my ticket number and I was asked to wait outside. That was a moment that I will never forget. For sure that I will never forget. Five minutes later, called at counter number six. A Kenyan lady asked for the following documents. Again, they ask for original documents and they are copies. Document number one was the passport followed by birth certificate, second newsletter, university certificate, secondary school certificate, two passport photo size, and the affidavit of support, I-134. So both, of, uh, both the original copies and the, uh, both original and copies, I submitted them. So for the affidavit of support, she requested for tax receipts. This is something I never knew that would be requested, of which I didn't, uh, I did not have them. I told her I didn't have and she said it was still okay. I was happy at that point. I was given an invoice to make the 330 US dollars in counter number 10, when then asked to wait outside for the actual interview. So I had to wait outside. A few minutes later, I had to, uh, my ticket number was called again and I had to go for the actual interview. So the actual interview goes by this. There was a gentleman, okay, the consular officer was a gentleman. So he was there, he started smiling at me. Good morning, are you Mr. So-and-so? That was my name. The, I was there and I was like, good morning to, yes, I am. Then he's, uh, the consular officer said, lift your hand and swear. So, blah, 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 I said, yes, I swear. So after that, the first question was, which year did you complete your secondary school? Straight to the point, I stated the year. Then there was a tricky question followed. Did you join the university same year? Bear in mind that I completed my secondary school at the end of the year, the last month of the year. So it was not the same year I joined. So I, was, I could, you know, I could figure that out. And I said, no, I joined the following year. The consular officer continues, did you take the four-year course? My course was a parallel course of which it took two years. So I told him, no, it was a parallel course that took only two years. He said, good. When did you travel to Qatar? You know, guys, I had a, hist a travel history from my home country to Qatar. That is in Asia. So for me, I replied to him the exact year. The consular officer continues. How long did you stay there? The number of years I stated them straight to the point. Then the other question came through. When did you get the idea of traveling there? 
I never expected such a question. So out from nowhere, I just told him from my few friends who had traveled to the uh, who had traveled there before me. Then the council officer continues. Where are your friends now? I went ahead and responded. Some are still there and some are already back in Kenya. The council officer had still more questions. Which job are you doing there? I stated it straight to the point as just as, as I had stated on the DS260. Then now I think my personal questions were over. He, he perused some papers along with him. And now I think it was the turn from the host information. And uh, guys, remember my host was the same as my sponsor and that was my brother. So the consular officer continues, who is, you know, my brother's name brackets there, and how are you related? So my answer was simple, my elder brother. Consular officer continues, which state does he live? Straight to the point, I answered the state. Which do job does he do? I had an idea of what he does, so straight to the point, I had to say that. Is he married? I had to answer that one. Then how many children does he have? Straight to the point. Then the consular officer, I think, was satisfied and was like, well, okay. He types on his computer for like 40 seconds to one minute. Then I was just there and she has, you know, I was still waiting for him to ask me about the missing name or something like that, but nothing like that. He never asked for anything about my name, my missing or my omitted name. Consular officer continues, well, congratulations, your visa is approved. Have you registered with the DHL for the shipment of your passport? Personally, I had not registered. I told him straight to the point, no. He gave me two documents, one green in color with the congratulation message and the information on how to register with the DHL for my shipment of my passport. Then the second one was the USIS uh, uh, payment you know the process or the process to follow to make the USIS fee the green card fee that was amounting to 220 US dollars for me I had nothing to say just thank you sir I walked outside smiling actually I was shaking out of excitement and all that so that was my best days of my life and the best feeling ever so that was my simple interview I think I had a lot of questions compared to the rest but that is it. So I walked outside, went, I went, I did my application again on phone for the, you know, passport shipment. And in less than a week, I received my uh, passport with my visa with all my three names. I was so excited and from there, nothing much. I had to travel as fast as I could because the pandemic was, you know, the COVID-19 was spreading very fast. And actually that time, the COVID-19 was extreme spreading like bushfire in America. So I didn't fear that, but I traveled amid COVID-19 and yeah, here I am sharing with you some experience from myself and other people. So thank you for watching this video. If you have a question on, especially on this video, drop it on the comment section and I'll be more than happy to help you out. So thank you for watching. See you in our next video.